Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Lexi. Thank you for joining me in today's exciting video. Um, so I say exciting because it is a Q&A video if you haven't already gauged by the title. Um, but I haven't done one of these in a while and I think they're always fun to do every once in a while. So basically I put a question box up on my Instagram and asked you guys to just ask me anything. Um, so basically I'm gonna run through those questions um, and I think I got a good wide variety of them. Um, so that'll be exciting. I'm not just gonna be like talking about one thing in particular so sit back grab your coffee grab your tea water maybe you're doing your cardio um, whatever you're doing sit back enjoy this video and um, without further ado let's get to it all right first question do you think if people can post on social media there would be as many competitors um, no I don't think there would be um, and I think I think the main reason why that would be is because I don't think if I, I think if social media didn't exist a lot of people wouldn't know about competing. I think a lot of like how people find out about competing um, most of the time is through social media. So I think for that, that reason alone that there wouldn't be as many competitors, but you know, and I hate to say this one, but I think we all know it's true to some capacity because I think there are some people out there that compete or get into competing like just for the clout or just you know to post on social media. Usually those are the same people that do a show and they're like, you know, they find out they don't like it and it's not worth it. Um, like usually those are not your competitors you see sticking around for long periods of time, but I think that has a little bit to do with it. So my answer to that would, I think if social media didn't exist, I do not think there would be as many competitors, but mainly because like I said, I don't think as many people would know about competing, you know? Um, Okay, what are my future goals and my long-term plans? So I am going to assume this kind of means like with competing since I document and talk a lot about that on this channel. Um, so currently my plan is um, to take the rest of this year, so to take the rest of 2023 and kind of make some small minor changes to my physique um, because my coach and I both agreed that like my shape and my structure is there. There's just a couple of minor things I need to change um, in order to get back on stage and do really, really well. Um, you know, I am kind of, unfortunately, I guess I say, unfortunately, this isn't a bad thing. Um, I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. I'm usually always in like height class C or D, which always has usually the most girls in it um, and a lot of very competitive girls. So I know like the last show I did, my coach was like, yeah, the girls that were in your class, the two girls, like the girls that got first and second, one of them won the overall. The other one was probably the second best in the whole show. So it's always like I'm going up against more competition. So we agreed that I need to make some small minor changes to my physique. Um, and we're planning on starting prep again at the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm very flexible. Um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to be better on stage next time. So like if we get to the beginning of the year, my coach doesn't think I'm going to be ready to start a prep. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, um, I mean, I'm not opposed to that, you know? Um, but obviously like my, my long-term goal is I wanna turn pro. I would love to turn pro and just represent the sport, you know, just on a higher level. Um, there's also a show next year too, like a national level show where you can get your pro card and then there's a pro show the next day. So that would be like my shoot for the moon goal. I think it'd be so cool to get my pro card and then literally compete in my pro debut the next day. That'd be so, so fun, you guys. But anyways, that's... Um, my answer to that. So next question, um, if you could go back in the time, what fitness advice would you give yourself? So this is an easy one for me. Well, there's two big things. I think the first thing is I would tell myself that doing more is not always better. Um, when I first started my fitness journey, I'm not afraid to admit that like this was like my late high school years. I never took rest days so bad. And I always like thought that was like, I, I would wear a badge of honor thinking like, oh, I never take rest days. And like now, I look back and I'm like, Lexi, you were so stupid for that. Like you were holding yourself back. And, you know, and I tell clients this too, you know, cause I have some clients who struggle to take rest days or struggle to do, you know, to do a little bit less. Um, and I, it, you know, I always say it comes down to quality over quantity, right? You need to rest strategically now because otherwise if you don't, your body is gonna force you to rest later down the line at an inconvenient time, probably in the form of an injury, right? So. That would probably be the biggest piece of advice I would give myself. I also think another thing I would tell myself is that it's not healthy to be stage lean all the time or to always, always, always be chronically lean, right? Um, especially like as a competitor like myself, when my feedback in the past has always been to put on muscle. I know after my first competition season way back in the day, I stayed very, very lean afterwards um, because I didn't really understand the importance of 
putting on muscle and the fact that like if you want to put on muscle you have to you know you have to gain a little bit of weight and, that, and some of that is going to be body fat right so those would probably be the biggest things i would tell my my old self right but you live and you learn and i don't really i can honestly say i don't have any regrets from early on because the mistakes i made early on in my fitness journey taught me what i know now you know um okay next question if you could have one training session with anyone who would it be okay so actually there's two people and I've trained with them both before, but they're just so amazing at what they do. Um, the first one would be Brett Contreras. He's the glute guy, the guy who invented the hip thrust. I'll put a picture of us above, but he's so awesome to train with. He always like takes glute training to the next level. Um, the second person would be Aldo from Iron University. Um, some of you guys may know him from, he dates Lorelei um, or Lorelei Chapatos, who's a bikini Olympian. Um, and like all things aside, I know he gets a lot of controversy um, for some of the things he says, but he's so good at his job. Like I have trained with him. I trained with him like four years ago. If I can find a picture, I'll put it above. It was kind of before he was like super big, um, but he's so good at what he does. His training is so, it's so unique. And I think he's, he'd be a fun one to like just train with every once in a while. So, okay, next question. Um, what lab work should I run to make sure my blood work is optimized? So I would say if you're looking to get your labs drawn and like you're um, an athlete, a competitor, I highly recommend getting a, like if you're a female or I guess if you're a male too, but if you're a female, getting a full comprehensive uh, female hormone panel um, because you want to usually you want to get more than just like the general health markers you want to get all the hormones you know so all of your thyroid hormones estrogen progesterone testosterone all of that um, so you would want to get a full comprehensive female hormone panel all right next question tips and tricks for hanger or sweet uh, having a sweet tooth and prep so I think that when it comes to having a sweet tooth and prep, I try to have at least like one thing every day that kind of helps with my sweet tooth. So like back in my 2021 prep, this sounds kind of silly, but like it, it helps. If you can have like one thing that you look forward to every day that helps with that sweet tooth, um, it really does help um, rather than just like ignoring the sweet tooth, right? Um, so I would have, I would actually freeze my peanut butter and then I would have it like frozen and it tasted like peanut butter fudge. And like, I would just have that every night. It was such like a good sweet treat and it just kept me satisfied. Um, but I think like, I think having one thing every day that you can look forward to, um, you know, not obviously when you're in prep, it's not like you can have a cookie or cake. Um, I mean, maybe you could if you track macros, but like that's, that's not smart. Right. Um, but I always just try to ask myself, okay, what am I craving? Um, and how can I make a macro friendly alternative to this? Right. So like if I'm craving a brownie, maybe what I try to do is I search like a macro friendly mug cake um that's like brownie flavored or you know maybe i try to make like a brownie batter flavored oatmeal or something like that right so i always just try to ask myself like how can i make what i'm craving how can i make a macro friendly alternative right um also something that really helps for me with my sweet tooth and prep is um decaf coffee um and like adding a little bit of pe science protein to it that's really good um and then i also like like a uh, red rose herbal tea that really helps with my sweet tooth as well um okay so next question how long to how long does it take to regain a cycle post show so this is gonna be a very dependent question. Um, there's not like a universal time, um, like every female's gonna differ, right? So I can tell you guys right off the bat, I have some clients that I work with that don't lose their cycle um, when they prep for a show, but I have you know many clients that, that do, and, and I'm one of those as well. Um, now, I think the biggest thing that people forget is that losing your cycle as a female isn't just because of low body fat, right? That's part of it, but you're also one of the reasons a lot of people lose their cycle and prep is because of all the stress you're putting on your body. Um, basically, when you're not getting your cycle, it's your body's way of saying that it doesn't feel safe enough to have a baby. You know, whether that's the goal or not, that's essentially what it comes down to. So I think that what's really, really important post-show is having a proper reverse diet um, and regaining a healthy amount of body fat, but also managing your stress and your allostatic load. I know that's something I work a lot with my clients on post-show is just getting their cortisol down, getting their adrenal health back to a good spot. So, you know, for most of my clients, like for some people, it, you know, maybe it only takes a month or two to regain their cycle, but for some people it takes, you know, five plus months, but that is a big priority of mine as a coach with my clients is post-show. Let's regain that cycle if we did lose it. Um, okay, next question. What made you want to start competing? I like this question. So 
I, you know, I was a gymnast growing up. I was a competitive gymnast and then I was a runner. Like, like I did several half marathons. So I've always had this like competitive kind of nature within me. I've always been very competitive, whether or not I show it or not. Cause I feel like growing up, I wasn't like, I was very competitive internally, not necessarily like I wouldn't show it on the outside, but I've always had this competitive nature um, and I've always been athletic. So when I moved to Tampa, for college um, I didn't know about competing until I moved down here and the fitness world here is a little bit more prevalent than where I'm from in the Midwest and so I remember like at my gym I went to the same gym every day and um, I got asked many times by people like do you compete do you compete and I was like no I don't even know what that is and then I got like asked that question so many times where I started to look into it and um, that kind of inspired me to be like you know what I want to try this out and so I just jumped the gun and hired a coach and it's all history from there so that is the answer to that question um okay best uh, macro ratio for women in their 50s and does age even factor in when it comes to macros so I would say when it comes to age I don't think it plays as big of a role as people think when it comes to macros I think people more oftentimes um more, more often times, if I'm being very honest, use their age as an excuse to why they can't reach their goals, if I'm being very honest. Um, but I would say for a female, a middle-aged female, um, you know, their macro split is probably going to look like macro ratio split, so to say, is probably gonna look very similar to what I would recommend for a female like in her 20s or 30s, right? So I would say I would aim for like 30 to 40% um, percent of your calories coming from protein. Um, and then as far as like, Fats, I would say 25 to 35% coming from um, fats and then the rest going to carbs. You can kind of play around with the carbs and the fat ratios, but I personally never like to drop below 20% of calories um, coming from fats for specifically females because they're so important for hormones. Uh, but I would say age doesn't probably play as big of a factor as people think when it comes to the actual macro ratios that you wanna follow. If anything, as you get older, you need to make protein even more of a priority because especially as females as we get older, the rate at which we lose muscle is a lot quicker, you know? So that is my answer to that. Um, what is my current cardio and how intense are my cardio sessions on my bike? So my current cardio is six sessions of 30 minutes every week. Um, and I would say, so I have a Peloton bike. And if those of, for those of you who don't have a Peloton, which I'm sure many of you guys don't, um, basically what it does is it tracks like your output. So that's kind of how I gauge. Like I don't really, I don't track my heart rate actually when I'm on it, I just track my output. So I try to hit a certain output every session. And as long as I'm hitting that, that's kind of how I track my intensity. So I would say it's more like moderate um, intensity steady state if I had to put like a um, kind of a, a description to it. Um, all right, so how does a person get to work with you as a coach? So specifically asking how can you work with me as a coach. So I always have my coaching link in the bio um, or in the description box. So if you are interested in potentially learning more about coaching with me, one-on-one um, -on -one coaching, you can apply through that link. And then once that um, application is through, we will schedule a consult call to see if things would be a good fit. So that's the answer to that. Um, next question, um, goals between now and my next show. So I kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning, but my goals right now are honestly to just build muscle, build muscle, build my calories up a little bit, build my, or bring my cardio down. Um, so that way I have a good maintenance going into my next prep. Um, and also I'm just really like my goals right now are to have a little bit more life balance um, and to really allocate more time to, you know, um, certain things such as travel for shows and, and just different career things as well. I think I'm a big advocate for when you're not in contest prep, taking advantage of that time and focusing on like life gains or career gains or goals on those side of things and not just always goals on like, you know, goals having to do with getting on stage. I think those are important, but I think it's also nice to have goals outside of competing too, you know? All right, next question. This is a juicy one. Do I date and do I have anyone special in my life right now? So I do not currently have anybody like special in my life right now. I mean, I have a lot of people in my life that I love, but nobody to that like level. Um, and honestly, when the right person does come around, uh, I probably won't like share it immediately because I, I do like to keep, I think I'm a firm believer like of keeping relationships on the DL until like they're very, very serious because I don't ever want to be one of those people that just is always like 
you know, showing a new person and then, oh, they're gone in a month. You know what I mean? Um, do I date? So here's the thing. I'm not, I'm like an old soul. Okay. I'm a grandma at heart and you can ask anybody who knows me very close in my life. They will say the same thing, but I'm not really somebody who just like dates around and just dates to have fun. Like I'm at a point in my life where I'm very, very busy with everything I have going on. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I don't date. I date, um, you know, and I'm, yes, I'm looking for somebody, but I don't just go on dates with the intention of like, let's just have fun. Like I'm, when I find somebody I wanna like, I want a serious relationship and I wanna settle down. So I don't just like date around. Like, yeah, I'm on dating apps and stuff. And I, you know, occasionally, um, you know, I'll go on them, but I'm not somebody who's just like looking to waste a ton of time and just date around. So. Hopefully that kind of like makes sense. But um, when the right person comes into my life, like I will be completely open to it. Um, just gotta find the right one. Um, but you know, once it's a serious thing, I'll probably, you know, introduce them to you guys. But it's not gonna be like a, I won't probably be public with my relationship until it's like very serious, if that makes sense. Um, okay, question or next question. Thoughts on genetic potential. So, oh, I really like this question. So genetic potential, um, you know, you hear a lot in the sport of bodybuilding that, you know, you, you hear this term genetic potential, meaning like your how your genetics play into your results and your potential as an athlete, right? Now, I don't think there is, you know, I think as much as sometimes we don't want to believe it, um, I think that genetics absolutely do play a big role when it comes to success as a competitor, right? Obviously, the people who are in the Olympia and doing the best in the Olympia, I mean, I hate, like, there's no way around the fact that, like, they have the best genetics, right? Even if they're, you know, there's not, I wouldn't say there's many natural level competitors at the Olympia level, but whether they're natural or not, they have the best of the best genetics, right? Um, but I think that, you know, when it comes to genetic potential, I think everybody has a lot of potential, even with, you know, even with not the best genetics. I think the people, though, with the less better genetics just have to spend a lot longer to reach that potential, if that makes sense. Um, I think that people with better genetics, they don't have to spend as long of a period of time getting to that potential. So that's my thought process on that. Um, and I do think sometimes people use genetics as an excuse. I'll be like a very cut and dry. I think sometimes I think people out there who like, you know, they're not getting what they want. They, they'll, they'll use genetics as an excuse, right? Uh, but there's no way around the fact that genetics does play a big role in the sport of bodybuilding. And you just have to know that getting into the sport, you know, if that makes you upset and mad, then maybe the sport isn't for you, you know? Um, okay, so next question would be goals between now, wait, I already answered that one, Never mind. Um, how, let's see, I'm trying to see which ones I have not answered. Um, okay advice for a newbie building muscle but unsure if they'll cut into bikini or wellness so this is a good question because i think a lot of like i've definitely run into this situation before with clients where they'll think they're like they're not sure if they're wellness or their bikini right um so i think the best way to find out is Honestly, if you've never, like first off, build as much muscle as you can, right? And then eventually do a fat loss phase and lean down and see what muscle you have and see what your structure kind of naturally, you know, uh, uh, leans down to, you know? A lot of people I think think they're bigger than they are and then they do their first fat loss phase and it's like, oh crap, I'm a lot smaller than I think. Um, I think the biggest thing, the, the best thing I can tell you if you're like, am I wellness or am I bikini is, bikini is very balanced. So if you lean down and there is a lot of balance between your upper and your lower body, your bikini. Um, if, you know, for wellness, in order to really fit the wellness criteria, you should have a very big lower body dominance. So if you lean down and your lower body and your upper body are very, you know, very proportional, you're probably not wellness. So that's a good way to kind of differentiate it. Um, okay, next question. Um, have you ever told a client that competing isn't the right idea for their lifestyle? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think sometimes I'll, I'll get client inquiries and, you know, clients they'll say I want to eventually compete but they don't really know what goes into the lifestyle and how much can truly go into it right um, and that's okay that's part of my job as a coach is to set those expectations and to make sure my clients know like hey if your goal is to compete here's really what it's gonna take right um, and you know and some people they're okay with that and then some people realize oh you know what if that's really what it takes I don't know if this is what I want anymore and that's okay you could still live the lifestyle of a competitor without getting on stage you know um, and to kind of follow up on that question the person asked if so do you offer what they need to change or do you tell them what they need to change about their lifestyle to compete absolutely you know it's it's 
part of being a coach is sometimes having those tough conversations, right? Um, and my biggest thing is as a coach, I always want to be upfront and honest with all my clients. I never want to lead anybody on, you know, last thing I would want to do is tell somebody, you know, oh yeah, you want to compete? Okay, let's do it. When I know in the back of my mind, this person has no idea what it's going to take and they're probably not going to be able to do it. Like I would never want to lead somebody on like that, right? If I have a client that comes to me and they want to compete, yet they can't track their macros, like they can't go a full week with hitting their macros and like they're just struggling with consistency, I'm always very open and honest with them. And I say, hey, like, I love the goal to compete, but we first need to master just consistency before we get there. And most people are very, very respectful of that. And in fact, they'll be like, thank you for telling me this rather than just leading me on. Because I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a coach who's just gonna take people's money. Like I, yeah, this is how I make my living, but I'm not gonna just take somebody's money even if I feel like they're not going to do well with like what, or realistically, they're not gonna be able to achieve their goal, you know? Um, okay. Um, I think I got all of the questions that I wanted to cover. Okay, cool. So this wraps up um, my Q&A. So if you guys enjoyed this, let me know. I'm happy to do more Q&As. Um, I wanna keep these to like, I don't wanna keep them, I don't wanna make them too, too long but I'll always kind of keep them to like this length. So if you guys think I should do more Q and A's in the future, comment below. Um, but as always, thank you for supporting my channel and me and um, be on the lookout. I plan to do some more giveaways in the future for my YouTube watchers specifically because I appreciate you guys so much. Um, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day wherever you are at in the world and I will catch you in the next video.